millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. summer wind is giving away to a cooler fall breeze, at least where I live. And that means you've only got a few months left this year to get your money ready for the new year. I'm not quite sure how this has happened, but here we are. So in this episode, I'm sharing eight fall money moves to make to set yourself up for success. So bring out those cozy sweats, brew a cup of tea, and let's start talking. Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money Podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. Whatever you're saving up for, a CD from Sandy Spring Bank lets you grow your savings at a guaranteed rate. Right now, earn interest at 4.5% APY on an 8-month CD special or 4.25% APY on a 14-month CD special. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com slash CD specials. Minimum opening deposit to earn the annual percentage yield is $500 for the 8-month CD special and $2,500 for the 14-month CD special. Member FDIC. In the last few weeks, there has been just the subtlest hint that summer is finally over here where I live. Some of the leaves, they're already changing colors, and it's finally possible to go outside at night without breaking out into a sweat and getting eaten by mosquitoes. If you live somewhere where there's humidity and mosquitoes or bugs in general, (laughs) you know what I'm talking about. I actually moved to the East Coast from the West Coast, and the West Coast... Although it was very hot and very dry, we didn't have a lot of bugs. We had spiders and we had lizards. So the last six months in our house, we kept having lizards show up. And I am definitely not a fan of sitting on the couch watching TV and like seeing a brown tail <laughs> go by on your floor. I mean, yeah, I'm, I do not cope well with bugs. So moving to the East Coast and learning to just sort of settle in with bugs. Let's just say it's been a little bit of a journey for me. So I I have some serious questions. I do have some serious questions as to why mosquitoes were created, but I'm also the girl that always gets eaten by them no matter what. So we just have a real contentious relationship. I also used to think that I was a summer girl. Like if I picked a season that I would love, I would say summer. But that's my my birthday is in July. So it would make sense that I was a summer girl. But after last year, I think I'm realizing I'm more of like a fall winter girl for sure, which sounds kind of crazy. But I really like a big cozy sweater and some jeans and some high top kicks. I mean, that is really my... My outfit of choice, if I will. So I'm kind of learning to to shift which season I think I am, which is always fun. It's always fun to evolve and change and not be stagnant. 
So if money had a season, I think it would be mid-September until around April. That covers about all the bases, right? We've got the end of the year, we've got the holidays, the new year reset when you're like super excited to get everything done and then things fall off a little bit. Tax time, we've got spring break. Yes, as an adult, I think you should take one of those. So that's pretty much really encapsulates a lot of the season around money. It's probably the time of year too when you start thinking about what to do with your money, or maybe you even freak out a little bit thinking that you haven't done the things that you want to do. So hint, this is also a great time to check in on your goals for the year without any judgment. Like don't belittle yourself if you haven't been able to achieve something, no shame or blame. I just want you to see where you're at and maybe you can make some little fine tweaks. Maybe you can think about something you could do today that moves you closer to your goals. Like don't think big, long range. That's too much for our brains to wrap around, particularly when it comes to money. Just think about one small thing every day. So one of my big goals for the rest of the year is to get really good at trading. Uh, I've been doing some swing trading. It's like day trading, but you hold your trades for some time a day, sometimes a week, sometimes longer until it's the right time to trade. And I've really been getting into this lately after we've had a few guests on this show that have talked about how they've used swing trading and day trading uh, to just create additional income and cash flow. So I have a really long-term goal of replacing, if not like super replacing, my monthly income with trading. But I know it's going to take me a little bit of time to get there. But that's my commitment to myself. So I'll be sure to report back at the end of the year and let you know how I'm progressing on that goal. But I think just outwardly talking about a goal makes it more realistic. And hopefully you hold me to that. So thinking about fall, there's a lot we could talk about, but I think these eight things are probably a good mix of things to do now and things to think about. We need a mix. If they're all action items of all to-do things, it might feel really daunting. So remember that money is about more than just collecting it, putting numbers in a spreadsheet or an app, and then just hoping, fingers crossed, knees crossed, whatever you want to cross, just hoping that it works out. It's more than that. It's so very much this mental game. And that requires you to constantly be thinking about your money blocks, your regrets, your money story, false money beliefs, all of that gunk that gets in the way. So it's important to have some money self-care time, just like you build in time for therapy and massages and working out. Think of this as your money self-care time. Okay, so number one on our fall money to-do list. If your wallet had a summer, now is the perfect time to check in on your spending. So check in on what's going on with your money, where it's going, where it's hanging out, all of the details. Think of this as a time for a money cleanse. Now, this is not about spending the least amount of money possible. It's not that. If you want to embark on one of those no spend challenges, totally fine to do, but let's be realistic. We can't do that for very long, in my opinion. A cleanse is more about tracking your spending for a week or preferably a month and just figure out what you're going to keep, what should be changed, and what should be tossed. There are probably a lot of old subscriptions that you're paying for, or maybe just small expenses. Like recently, I just did a money cleanse, and I realized that I had like four QuickBook accounts <laughs> that were all deducting about 20 bucks a month out of my bank account. And I was like, wait a minute, this is ridiculous. Why do I have four QuickBook accounts? Now, I have a couple of different uh, accounts going on because of the way I work and different things like that, but I was like, okay, let's figure out how we could consolidate this and not spend that much money every month. So I reworked the system and then I had like an extra, let's see, I took four down to one, so I had an extra like $75 a month. So then I was like, okay, where do I put that $75? Let me put it towards one of my goals, put it towards my investing, or just put it towards my fun money every month because you got to have some fun. We like to eat out. So I was like, wow, okay, I'll just add that to the eating out budget. 
So you get where I'm going, right? You can always find something hanging out in your bank account. So then any money you save, again, I want you to route it to your magical, amazing, wonderful goals so you can just get there quicker. So I did an episode a few months ago on cash tracking. If you haven't listened to that one, I'll link it in the show notes. Go back and check that out. But it's really important to do, even if you're like, no, nah, I know where all my money is going. Everything is fabulous and amazing. Okay, you can preach it all you want to me. <laughs> Have you recently gone and tracked exactly where your money is going? And more specifically, I'm talking about that amount of money that is extra every month that isn't going to the bills that you have to pay. That is the place that you want to spend your time because that is where you're going to find all of these aha gems. So number two, if your retirement savings is giving you the side eye, Think about what it would take to maybe max out your 401k this year or max out your Roth or your IRA. And if maxing out, if that feels too steep for you to do, which I totally understand, especially this year, we've got a lot of inflation, things are costing a lot more money. Focus on maybe increasing your contributions by one to 5%. You're not really going to feel that difference in your paycheck right? So you're not suddenly going to be without thousands of dollars every month, but it's going to be a little extra amount going into your retirement savings, especially if you're getting a match from your company. I want you to at least think about contributing up to that match because if you aren't, you're really missing out on essentially free money, right? This is sort of like a bonus that your company is giving you for working at that company. So I really want you to take advantage of anything (laughs) that is extra. All right, number three. If you're putting on a life jacket every month and you're afraid your money might sink, now is the best time to figure out what your survival number is. So I also like to call this your foundation number, but survival number is just what's kind of ringing true to me right now. So that's the amount of money you need without fail to just pay your bills, the things you have to pay. So I'm talking about rent, mortgage, car payment, minimum student loans, and minimum payments on your credit cards, groceries. I know this may feel a little taboo, but we have to eat every month, right? And we know that it's a lot less money, even though it's still expensive, It's a lot less money to go to the grocery store and cook our meals than it is for us to go out to eat. So I include groceries in our survival number. Your cell phone bill, anything is, is, you have to pay, right? Any of those loans that you have to pay that you, I would also include car insurance in there, right? It's just all of that gunk. Add all of that up. That is your survival number. So anything that isn't extra, yes, eating out is considered extra. So it's not in your survival number, much to our dismay. And I'm just going to put you at a gentle ease right now. We all spend too much money on eating out. If you want to suddenly find money in your bank account, add up how much you spent eating out last month. Look at that number And then figure out how you can decrease that even by a small percentage, right? You don't have to knock that all out. That's kind of crazy talk. But find out how you might be able to decrease that a little bit. Take that extra cash, put it somewhere else. You'll be surprised how fast you can achieve your goals. So once you know this survival number, you're in a real healthy place to know each month if you can meet your survival number, right? So you You have a grasp on like, this is the stuff I actually have to pay. Any uh, income that you get that's over that number, you should then allocate to the other stuff. Shopping, eating out, saving money, trips, entertainment, coffee runs, all of that stuff. The extra money goes to all of that. I call it like delicious spending, but it's not spending that we absolutely have to do. Like we don't technically have to go out and eat in order to just pay our bills and like know that we have a roof over our head and we have electricity. We don't necessarily need that. Yes, it's super, super nice. But, you know, if if we're talking about 
you know, the difference between eating out versus being able to pay a rent or a mortgage, I'm always going to tell you to choose pay your rent or your mortgage. <laughs> I promise you, you're going to eat out in the future. But survival number is really important for you to know because number one, it puts your brain at ease. So if you're someone that just fixates on numbers like I do, then you're always thinking about like, am I going to be able to pay my bills? So this gives you a peace of mind. If you know that there is a difference between your survival number and the income you make every month, then that should give you a little bit peace of ease knowing that you can at least pay those bills. All right. So it, it's there's power in knowing this information. So number four, if you are excited for the holidays, but not all the gift buying, <laughs> I want you to head online to your credit card point center. Every credit card that has points or cash back has a point center, if you will. And I want you to see how many points you have. So you might be really surprised. Most credit cards let you use points for all sorts of things like restaurant gift cards, the retailers, even cash back. So you can use your points this way so you don't have to come out of pocket and you don't have to rack up debt this holiday season. So no one has to know that you used your points. It's like your little secret. So what I do every year is I go in, find how many points I have. I go into my credit card point center, if you will. And I look like, okay, what can I get? Well, let's say I know I want to, I'm just making this up off the top of my head. Let's say I know I want to buy my dad a sweater from Gap. I can go and exchange my points for a gift card from Gap, right? Then I can go take that gift card and I can go buy him the sweater. So he doesn't have to know any of the behind the scenes information that happened before I actually bought the sweater. But it's brilliant because it's, it's a way of giving gifts, not having to come out of pocket and utilizing those points because you, you need to rack up a lot of points in order to be able to travel and get things like free flights and free hotels. I'm talking like hundreds of thousands of points, sometimes less. It just depends on where you're traveling, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're stressed out this holiday season and you know, you're someone who loves to give gifts, but you're just thinking, like, I don't have the budget for this, even if you do, okay, I'm going to argue even if you do, go to your point center. It's brilliant, honestly. I do this every year and I have to come out of pocket a very small amount of money for gifts. And so I don't know, I just feel like it's kind of a win-win scenario. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic, and it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. 
Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. When it comes to work, communication is key. Even if you don't have a writing job. Sounding unconfident, indecisive, or passive-aggressive can hold you back professionally and hurt your team's productivity. Grammarly Premium's advanced tone suggestions make sure you're always sending the right message. Sound clear and confident in your writing and automatically replace negative-leaning language with solution-focused alternatives. With Grammarly's help, you can build stronger relationships at work, be constructive in the face of challenges, and help your team get things done. Grammarly works where you do, so your team's projects get done before the deadline. And with features like comprehensive spelling, grammar, and clarity-focused sentence rewrites, Grammarly helps keep your writing efficient and mistake-free. The right tone can move any project forward. Get it just right with Grammarly. Go to grammarly.com slash podcast to sign up for free. Then get 20% off when you upgrade to premium. That's 20% off at grammarly.com slash podcast. Number five, all right, if you're sitting on the couch searching Netflix for an hour for something to watch, (laughs) that's me. So if that's you, I can totally relate. I want you to grab your phone instead. I want you to call your internet and cell phone provider and ask this very simple question. Is there a better plan for me where I can save money? That's all you need to ask. Nine out of 10 times, the answer is yes, of course, because They're constantly updating their plans, constantly. I I would love to know the behind the scenes information. If you're someone who works for one of those companies, I would love to know this data and this information, but they're constantly updating their plans. So that's how you can essentially, I call two times a year and every time I get moved on a new plan and I save more money. So even if it's an extra $25 or $50 a month. That's a lot of money that you can route towards your goals, or you can put it in maybe like a fun money account. So I recently worked uh, with someone helping them kind of rework their relationship with money. And we were coming up with all of these interesting ways to structure a spending plan. Because I, you know, I really do not like to call it a budget, right? Cash tracking, spending plan, it's a roadmap for your money. And we were thinking about, she likes to impulse spend. That is something that she does. And so rather than remove the behavior for her, it was more about how to create a line item for you and a boundary and an account where you can funnel some money in every month. And this is your, essentially your impulse spending account, you actually have an account for that. So the point I'm making here is if you do something very simple like this, get a new cell phone plan, new internet plan, you save money, you get to create the structure around how you want to utilize that money for what makes sense to you. Create a spending plan that works for you. There aren't any hard, fast rules other than you need to pay the bills you need to pay, but everything else is completely up for grabs. So if you saved $50 times 12 months, that's $600. That is more money than most Americans have saved for an emergency. And you didn't even have to earn any extra money for that. That's the beauty. You literally just asked a simple question. So you can also do this with your credit card if you're feeling a little frisky. Now, uh, the odds are a little lower when we're talking about lowering your credit card interest rate, but I say it's always worth the ask, specifically if you've had a credit card for, I would say longer than a couple of years and you've always made your payments on on time. I would call them and say, you know, I have your credit card. I've used it, obviously, and I'm thinking about switching to another card that has a lower interest rate. And I'm wondering if I could get an interest rate reduction on this card because I would love to keep my loyalty and stay with this company. Make those your own words, but that's basically what you're asking them. Be polite, be nice. Some of the times I've gotten a no and what I've done is just hung up and called back and got someone else and gotten a yes. (laughs) So don't always take a no and no, but some credit card companies are pretty 
uh, I don't know what the good word is to use, but they're pretty strict on their policies. All right. So I would say your odds are maybe seven out of 10 for, for that, but still those are pretty good odds and definitely worth a call. So number six, if you fell asleep in your company's HR meeting, (laughs) well, you're not alone for sure, but you're probably missing out on some good benefits as well. Yes, okay, you've got your health care, you've got your retirement savings, but a lot of companies offer all sorts of benefits like money that you could use uh, to advance your certifications. Some companies even offer some sort of funding to help you get an advanced degree. That's beautiful. Some offer discounts on life insurance or travel benefits or even... um, Gosh, I've seen discounts on things like home insurance, car insurance, all sorts of things like that. Plus, a lot of them have other financial protection policies. There might be disability option, long-term care. There's all sorts of things, but you just got to ask. And then I think the other part of that is just remembering that these benefits are worth something to you. Of course, We would always love to get extra money in our paycheck. I mean, who doesn't want that? But these things can still be worth money in your pocket, particularly if you're maybe like thinking between two job offers and you're trying to weigh it out. Maybe the salary is somewhat similar. I would look at the benefits and I would see just what makes most sense. Like where are you getting the most bang for your buck, so to speak? Another thing to bring up, I don't know if you're involved in your alumni association, either from your undergrad or your graduate degree, but I am from mine. And I will say that they give a lot of offers on all sorts of things. Think that we're talking about like car insurance and home insurance and trips and all sorts of discounts available. And I'm I'm always curious how many people are actually taking advantage of those Probably not too many, but again, I mean, if there's a way you can save some money on something that you're already spending money on, it's brilliant, right? I think that is a, is being smart. That is a smart money move because you're still keeping the item that you have, of course. You're just finding out a smarter way to pay for it, and then you're doing something with that difference of money. All right, number seven. So if you've been scratching your shopping itch with your student loan payment money these last few years, now is the time to take a deep breath and get yourself ready for the payment to start up again in January 2023. Yes, it's coming. There's not going to be another extension from here. This is going to be it. So I want you to buckle the seatbelt and get prepared. One of the things I like to suggest is to do a practice run with things like student loans. You can even do this if you're going to buy a house. So I want you to just pick a month and pretend that you actually have to make that payment. So, you know, it could be October, November, December, pick any month, preferably not December because that's when we spend a lot of money on holidays, but it's up to you, right? Pick a month. And pretend that you're making this payment. So what that looks like is, let's say your student loan is $350. You would take $350 from your checking account, move it to your savings account, like you made that payment, right? And see what happens during the month. You're you're trying to make sure that the wheels on the bus don't fall off your bank account. Yes, obviously, you can move that money back in from your savings account if you need But if you get in a place where you actually need to do that, that's when I want you to start investigating what's going on. (laughs) What's going on under the scenes? Why is this happening? What do I need to maybe change around? So you're doing it where you have a little bit of a crash landing pad and not in a month where, let's say in January, where you actually have to make that payment, right? I want you to be able to figure it out before there's an issue. All right, so just do a practice run. Also, if you're buying a house, I love this strategy. When I used to work with people, this is what I would suggest. If you're buying a house, you know the mortgage is going to be X amount of dollars. Utilize that exact same strategy, right? Where you 
move a certain amount of money over into your savings account, see how that feels, or more importantly, if there's a difference between the rent you're paying or the mortgage you're paying now and your new mortgage, that's the difference you wanna move over because you wanna get a feel for what is it going to be like to make that mortgage payment? What are we going to need to adjust? What are we going to need to think about? All of those questions kind of come to mind. And again, it's so much easier to do this when you have that, you know, soft landing place than when you're actually making the payment because that's when you really start freaking out, right? So they say, right, practice makes perfect. So give all of these things a practice and just see what happens. Just, you know, use a little bit of like a, you know, inspector mindset, if you will, like, okay, it was around, let's say the 22nd of the month where money started to get a little bit of tight. What sort of happened, you know, from the first of the month to the 22nd, what went on there that's maybe different that we need to take a look at, right? I always want you to have this eye of investigation when it comes to your money, not shame, blame, and guilt, and not fear. I don't want you to be fearful. I want you to just think about, I'm smart. I can figure this out, but I've got to look at the numbers. I got to do a little digging. I can't just close my eyes and hope that everything is going to be copacetic and kind of work out. Trust me, I've tried that strategy many, many times before, and I can report back that it definitely does not work. (laughs) All right, number eight on our fall money moves list. If you're like me and you always head to the sales section when you shop, I'm going to urge you to not do that with the upcoming healthcare enrollment. There are so many times when it's okay and it's great to get a good deal and and you can buy the cheapest thing. That, That totally makes sense. Like maybe when you're craving like a greasy pizza, okay, we can like find the cheapest option because we just need to fulfill that urge of a greasy pizza. But it's not great advice when you're picking a healthcare plan. So there are some things I want you to think about before the open enrollment comes up. The first one is, does the plan I have now, does that actually work for me? So you're, you're looking at this plan in depth, like, was this a good choice? Or maybe I should have chosen a different plan. So when you think about like, how many times did I go to the doctor this year? Was there anything unusual medically that happened to me this year? Is there anything big coming up next year? So are you thinking about having a baby? Are you thinking about having surgery? What what might come up that you actually know about? Now, there's a lot of stuff that comes up that you don't actually know about. and You can't really plan for that. But the things you can plan, I want you to think about. And I want you to ask yourself, is the deductible on this plan okay for me? So if you had an emergency and you had to come up with X amount of dollars, whatever your deductible amount is, could you do it if you got sick or hurt, right? Or if you couldn't come up with that amount of money, but maybe you needed to go on some sort of payment plan with the hospital or the doctor, could you afford those payments? Or is there a better plan that might make sense for you? Just kind of think these things through. And last thing I want you to think about is the doctor that I use, is that in-network in this plan. So healthcare plans are changing so rapidly now that I want you to always make sure that the doctors that you go to are in-network in the plan that you have. That should be something you check every single year. All right, I got a bonus for you. Bonus number nine, because we all like odd numbers, right? (laughs) So if money always feels like the biggest elephant in the room or even a tiger that you're trying to keep caged up, I want you to think about what is causing you the most fear or anxiety. Really dissect that and then think about what's one thing you could do each day to help relieve that fear or anxiety. It's next to impossible to make good money choices, good money moves, whatever you want to call it, progress when you're in this state of fear and anxiety. The brain, it just, it can't work like it should. It's one of the main reasons why almost all humans overspend or shop too much or eat out too much because it's just human nature, right? 
We don't like to think about money. So we just spend money with our eyes closed. And then we just panic when we kind of feel out of control and we don't know what to do, right? So it's the cycle that is completely normal. But I I want you to create these moments of time, even if it's half a second between your fear and anxiety and then an action, right? So a lot of times when we feel upset or we're stressed out or we're fearful, we actually do the opposite of what makes sense. So I know a lot of times when I'm stressed, I go straight to I want to buy something, which is completely counterintuitive because if I'm stressed about my money, going to buy something is certainly not going to make that feeling any better. But somehow our brains are wired really strangely when it comes to money. And it largely has to do with the fact that we don't talk about money. We do on this show. And if you're listening to this show, you know, that's what we do, right? We talk about money without fear, shame, blame, judgment, guilt, any of that. But the rest of the world doesn't really operate around that. All right. So I want you to take pauses. If you're feeling anxious or stressed out about money or any feeling you're having around money, take a pause between the feeling and the action. See if you can catch yourself. See if you can logically think through, okay, I'm feeling stressed about money. So probably mm, not the smartest thing to do right now is to spend money. Can I work on why I'm feeling stressed? Can I help remedy that just a little bit? Just some food for thought. So first you have to work on your thoughts and feelings around money, then your behaviors and your actions. And once you do that, you'll start to notice that your outcomes change, sometimes overnight. So that thing you've been trying to achieve or do, when you focus on thoughts and feelings, their connection to your behaviors and actions, you're going to be so shocked that your outcomes start to change. And things that you have been wanting to do finally just make sense, right? Capisce, you hear me on that? So hopefully this list has got you thinking about how you want to round out the rest of the year. And now you have a checklist to make it happen. So money is personal. I want you to pick and choose what works for you and then just leave the rest. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd be honored if you shared it with some friends and family members who also need to get their money in shape before the fall. You can find links to everything I mentioned as well as our episode sponsors right here in the show notes. And I would love it if you haven't done before, To leave an honest review for the show, you can head over to ratethispodcast.com slash ETM. I will have this link in the show notes. Easy place for you to just go over there and leave us a review. I'll see you back here in a few days for a brand new episode. (laughs)